Hi DF exclamation point after watching Rich's handheld roundup video, I was curious why these devices are still a bit, quite a bit slower than the Series S. How come the Z1 Extreme is quite a bit faster than the Ryzen 3600X and the GPU, at least in theoretical terms, should have more power than the Series S1? Might there be some optimization left on the table regarding drivers or DirectX APIs, or is it just not really possible to compare since GPU and CPU are constantly fighting for the TDP? Thanks for your thoughts, exclamation point. Fairly simple one to address, right, Oliver? Yeah, I think to me, one very, very large factor is the fact that the bandwidth is so much lower. So on the yeah. Z1 Extreme, you're looking at about 100 gigabytes per second of bandwidth versus Series S, I think on the eight gigabytes, you're looking at like 200 gigabytes per second. It's, it's certainly yeah. a lot faster. Mm -hmm. That's a really big factor. Power limitations and contention issues, those do play a role as well, um, for sure. I'd also just want to emphasize that the eight teraflop figure or whatever for the ROG Allies GPU, that's coming from the dual issue FP32, right? That isn't really reflected in performance in real games. It doesn't give you that kind of a performance advantage. If anything, you know, you should probably be looking at figures that would suggest it's about half as half as fast as, as those figures would, would suggest. So yeah, I think in general, it's just that the bandwidth is keeping it back and some power contention issues can keep it in check. But obviously if you've got it running at like 35 watts or something, those are less of a factor, but they are still still a bit of a factor. Yeah, I think power does probably have a, a good amount to do with it. I mean, this, if you think about it, even if you factor out dual issue FP32, you're still at four teraflops then, which is what the Series S is doing, but you're getting about realistically like half or lower of the actual performance when you're comparing games. Right. So, you know, there is a lot more going on there than, you know, just the architectural notes alone would tell you. So, yeah, I just think it's ultimately a very re resource constrained device. And obviously a console can run from mains, has much faster memory, doesn't really worry so much about power envelopes as, as a handheld does. There's a lot of uh, what Alex would call confounding factors. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of uh, confounding things happening there. Do you have anything to add to that, Alex? You're not a big handheld man. No, so um, but I think this uh, everything you said covers it. I really do think that that power is such a such a limiting factor. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I also think, like, just going off the top of my head here, I think the max clock on the ROG Ally Z1 Extreme is 2.7 gigahertz. But even like if I'm using the device in the turbo mode or have you created a custom power profile and I've said donuts go to 53 watts go to the maximum you can <laughs> um, I'm not getting 2700 when games are GPU limited and I'm just not I'm getting like 2200 2300 maybe so like that's already a big haircut off the maximum theoretical mm. teraflop number right and then from there you're looking at various issues with bandwidth and whatnot and you're dealing with a somewhat inconsistent clock rate and there are lots of other factors that play into the fact that it's not actually achieving a very high level of performance relative to a series s mm -hmm. yeah fair enough